Jenny, if you could head this direction, please. I believe you had an announcement. And then we'll go from there. Ann's coming up, too. We'll go to the, the Sunshine Committee right after that. Also wanted to mention while they're coming this way is Heidi Woodward, who is the current president of the Rotary Club of Bryson City, has been elected an alderman of that city. And a little closer to home, past district governor Ronnie Thompson was elected as a mayor of Morganton right. yesterday. Yeah. No, two days ago, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Jenny? Thank you, President Hart. The first thing I would like to do is thank the Rotarians who came out and painted pinkies of my children. I know that John was there, Ms. Huffman is not here today, but she was there. Um, Mark came, Cliff came. Ernie. Who else? Ernie was there. Ernie was there. It really tickled the kids because they think that Rotarians are like superheroes. So they really thought a lot of other people coming to do that. So thank you for taking the time to do that. I hope that you were as blessed by that experience as we were. So today what I would like to do is present from the children of Southwest Elementary where our enrollment's like, 325. We have a check for $288.36. So somebody got like part of their pinky cover. Um, to the Hickory Rotary Club for uh, polio eradication and for us to donate to uh, Rotary International. So thank you very much. And that's one dollar at a time. The kids were so excited to be heroes because we would tell them that they were heroes because they were doing something for someone they would never ever meet and could never ever say thank you, and that that was the definition of a true hero. And they were so proud to walk around the school and smear their purple everywhere and say, I'm a hero. They would run up to you, and, or to me, and say, I'm a hero, look at my pinky. And all the rest of my hand is now purple. So it was awesome, thank you. Thanks, Jenny. That's great for the school to donate almost $300, almost a dollar per head. We really appreciate it, and that, that's a great effort on their part. Probably didn't make any friends with the janitor, it doesn't sound like, but. <laughs> That's right. Also, I need two volunteers. If you could see me afterwards, if you're interested, I need one. Uh, we need an interact chair to interact with Hickory High School. So if somebody would have a have an interest in, in heading that up, please see me. Also, I've got an email from the Tuesday Club, and this was a little before my time, but some of you may remember there used to be a field day between the two clubs, and then my understanding is that. We had to take a truckload of crutches out there every Saturday when they did it, so they stopped doing it. But they would like to uh, revive that if there's some interest from our club. I think they, they said no softball. I guess that's where the majority of the injuries turned out. But maybe some uh, cornhole tournament and frisbee golf and tennis and some other things. So if anybody has an interest from our club and you know, think that would be a fun idea, which I think it would be, see me, we need somebody to coordinate with the Tuesday club and, and maybe put a plan together for that. And you come on up with the sunshine report, please. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. You may remember uh, Judy Donner was here on October 15th to give us an update on the Kenya Water Project. And uh, she had sent us, was going to give us a banner, and she forgot to bring it, so she did send us one. Thank you, President Mark. On birthdays, we have Philip Reed, November 4. We missed that one. I guess that was yesterday. Sandy Fartheringham here today. Yeah, Sandy's birthday is November 7, which I think is Saturday. So happy birthday, Sandy. <laughs> Health of the club, I learned at my table that our uh, former member, Anna Shook, uh, is expecting her third child. So that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Drew, you're going to give us a report on Neil. Yes, uh, well, Neil has uh, been moved. He's at Kingston Manor now. Uh, and uh, he is in the rehab. I think he's across the hall from Avery, if that's correct. So Avery's over there. Uh, he's taunting Neil, saying it's time to race. And so we hope that works out soon. Neil's making progress, but it's a slow progress, as you can imagine. Uh, and so he, he is in a place where he can have visitors, uh, but we just want you to continue to keep him in your thoughts and your prayers and, 
And also, Sandy, who's been kind of a great friend and a supporter, we know what that's like when you're trying to support somebody going through something like this as well. So let's keep Sandy in our thoughts as well. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. I, I've got two things for us today. Uh, this may be repetitive, but I was, my attention was caught by the cover of our September issue of Rotarian. It says, Dear Polio, we have very bad news for you. Very, very, very bad news. Today we stand extremely close to eliminating you. We still have more work to do, but we'll get there. Someday we'll live in a world where you no longer exist. So, prepare to exit stage left. Adios, au revoir, sayonara, toodles, goodbye. Sincerely, Rotary. Okay, five signs. Yeah. Five signs that were spotted here and there, and the first one's really bad. Toilet out of order. Please use floor below. In a London department store, bargain basement upstairs. Spotted in a safari park. Elephants, please stay in your car. <laughs> On a repair shop door, we can repair anything. Please knock hard on the door. The bell doesn't work. <laughs> and finally, uh, this was a headline in the newspaper, not the Hickory Daily Record, while the mill home has held it. But, man kills self before shooting wife and daughter. <laughs> you got to think about that one. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> One more thing we forgot to mention is on the tables, uh, Greg Sudrith is on the tables for the second and final time. So uh, hopefully we'll be inducting him soon. But if you uh, have any questions about that, you can see Linda's here today or, or Anthony, and they, I'm sure they can answer any questions about Greg for you. And with that, our program core attention has. So our guest speaker today is Al Kirshner, and Al is the owner of Food Matters Market and Cafe. And if you saw your spoke on your tables or if you saw on Facebook, we have a little bit more about him. One of the things that I've noticed uh, in getting to know Al better is he is very passionate about a few things. He's very passionate about good food. He's very passionate about good people, and he's very passionate about being involved with his local community, which I thought was a great fit for bringing him to Rotary. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Al Kirshner, Food Matters. I'm going to set this thing right here, hopefully, and work. First of all, I want to thank Corey for, can you hear me okay? Uh, I want to thank Corey for giving us the opportunity to come and speak with you today and share with you some of the things that we are doing and want to be doing in your community. But before we get into that, i got to tell you a little something about myself. I'm from Wisconsin. I'm a very strong Packer mm -hmm. fan. Mm -hmm. I want to put that on the table right up front because Sunday we may not be on the same side all the time. So. <laughs> I just want to let you know, I'll be at the game. I usually go up to, to Wisconsin every year for a game, but this year I felt, well, it's close, and you can probably take it in. So I hope I see some of you folks there. We, uh, just to tell you a little bit about our company and what we want to do and why we're here in Hickory. We are, our home base is Brevard, North Carolina, which has a total population of about 8,000 people. Our vision and our business plan and what we plan to do is to bring healthy food, healthy alternatives, and, a, and an interesting market to smaller communities. I'm sure you all are acquainted with Whole Foods and Earth Fair, which I can segue into in a minute, but it's we felt there's a missing link in a lot of these communities where people are not having the opportunity or the proximity to select good, wholesome, and healthy products. So that's the reason we came to Hickory. We opened our first store in Brevard, North Carolina, a uh, population of 8,000 people. 
we took over a place that had already gone out of business, we refurbished it, and started in. We had planned on not being in this situation quite this early in our growth, but it turned out fairly well, fairly quickly in Brevard. So we decided, okay, let's go out, we raised some capital, and our plan was to open up three stores and then take a stop for a minute. But our overall business plan is to be in about 2018 or so forth, having about 15 to 18 stores either open or in progress throughout the Carolinas and probably little Tennessee or Georgia. It's been an interesting journey so far because it's quite intriguing when you go into the smaller communities. Now I have to tell you, Hickory's on the high side of the population. Uh, we had, our model really calls for 30, 15 to 30,000 people. But we felt that this location in town, uh, the old Ace Hardware store, was kind of like a, almost like a, you know, you gotta be here. And so that's one of the reasons why we kind of stepped out of our, our, shall I say, our model and came to uh, Hickory. We believe a lot, and not a lot, as Corey mentioned, very strongly in being involved in the community. We've been open now four, four and a half months, and now we're going to start reaching out and become involved mm -hmm. in a lot of the organizations and uh, institutions that are in your community. That is part of being local, and we are all about local. The other part of that local uh, model is local products. Back in January, I believe it was, uh, last year, I made contact with the uh, county extension office over in Newton to just talk to them about what is involved, what, what kind of local products you have in, in your area so that we could start a dialogue with the local farmers. We were very presently, pleasantly surprised by the interest in being or that the interest in the community and in the farmers out here, that they were very much interested in having a, a, a source besides uh, a market in town town, they were very much interested in getting involved with some sort of retail establishment that would be able to bring their products to market. And that's not, it's hard, and, and I, I want to distinguish between a large grocery store and a store like ourselves. It's important that we connect with the source of our food. We want to know where it's coming from, we want to know the people that are producing it, and we want to be able to work with them to be able to bring their products to a market of people that are interested in local and quality and, and sometimes mostly organic products if we can get them. So we put, put on a, um, uh, what do you want to, might want to call it, a, a gathering at over in the Holler Mill over here and met with a, uh, a group of farmers that came in one-on-one. On one. That turned out so well that we decided we would sponsor a event in uh, the Newton uh, Extension Office. But we had a crowd that we couldn't, that was so large that we could not, let them, they couldn't let them all in. And I say that not bragging, but to say that there is a real feeling in the agricultural world, there's a real feeling in the area about supporting local products and local food products. And I, I say products both ways because there's soaps and there's other type of products that we have in our store that are free of a lot of the, uh, shall I say, elements or ingredients that are not part of our philosophy. But it was very interesting that they were that intrigued about being part of a retail uh, uh, extension of their products. We um, sat and spent a lot of time working with them to how they can price themselves and how they can have to go through certain standards that we have to come to market. And what I want to, when I said the larger store and our store, to go for a small uh, local farmer to go into a large store, it doesn't work for them because they just can't supply a, you know, the whole market on a regular basis. So a, a vehicle like ours is, shall I say, more friendly to what they 
what their profile fits. So we, we started with that and found a very strong interest. And when we opened up, we had a very strong interest from the community for the local products that we were able to bring in from the farmers. We still bring in the best we can from the local sources, but as you know, the season changes, you can't always do that. Um, a little bit about why we do what we do. I myself was, uh, came from Wisconsin 28 years ago to uh, Asheville, kind of semi-retired, kind of got involved hanging out in coffee shops. And I was telling Croy, I hang out in coffee shops and got, I was reading Business Week and people would come up to me and say, are you a businessman? And I'd say, no, I'm just kind of hanging out. But what I'm getting with this is that there's a uh, lot of small companies and a lot of small businesses just were struggling to find out how to put themselves together. So I kind of got involved mentoring people, businesses, small bakeries, uh, coffee shops, small enterprises, computer stores, whatever. And was always trying to tell them that business is very simple, really. It's 80-20. 80% 80 of all businesses are the same. I mean, you've got to have accounting, you've got to have marketing, you've got to have structure, you've got to have management, you've got to have all this other stuff. The 20% is really what the passion and what the interest of the owner or owners may be. That becomes, but sometimes when you do this, as many of you know, the passion overrides the 80% and it kind of gets dysfunctional. Well, I got involved with a bakery in Asheville, which was making organic breads and organic products. Up the street, or across town, I should say, was a store called Earth Fair, one store. And so I said to the baker, I said, why are we not going over there to talk to the grocery store? Well, that was, they apparently had a fight earlier or something, but anyway, we, we went over and met with them, and I you know, introduced the baker again, and we got our breads in the store. But in that conversation, the owners of the store asked me if I could raise them money. Well, long story short, we raised them money, put together a plan, and then uh, with that plan, went out and hired a CEO that actually knew something about the grocery business and actually knew how to you know, manage the stores and so forth. Because in this industry, as you've seen it grow, for those who've watched like a Whole Foods or an Earth Fair grow, it started out as a cottage industry. It started out with People in the back garage, not, not just like the computer world, they were getting their products, they were bringing it to the store, and they were selling it out the door, but really weren't making any money. So it has matured, as you can tell, with having a Whole Foods being one of the premier grocery chains in the country. So anyway, we, we got together, and Bird Fair is what it is today. It's grown. We sold a company, and, and uh, it's actually been sold twice. And we felt, my partner and I, who is the CEO, was the CEO, decided that we wanted to do what I mentioned earlier, come into the community, be local, be uh, a, a, a healthy alternative to other uh, venues. And that is why we put together the company that we have. We try to stay in a uh, box of, say, 12,000 or 13,000 square feet. As those of you who have been in the store, or hopefully those who all get in the store, will notice that we're very intimate. And I don't mean that in any other way except the fact as you come in, you're going to have product on both sides of you. You're going to have people that are extremely knowledgeable about the products. We pride ourselves in being able to communicate with our customers about why if they got a question about it, we know the answer to it. We feel that the intimacy of the store and the service level of the store relies totally on the ability of the people that are in, the, in our, in our I don't want to say control, but are part of our team, are able to have a real sincere dialogue with you. And a lot of people ask, if you, for those of you who have been in and those of you who have not been in an Earth Fair or a Whole Foods or some other uh, healthy store, when you look at our shelves, you say, gosh, there's cereal, but I never saw that brand before. I never saw this before. I never saw that before. 
and it's very helpful for our people to be able to explain to you why this product is what it is. And I, I, in your stuff that I gave you, I think we have it in there, there's a, a list of ingredients, for example, that do not show up on the shelf of our store anywhere. Once in a while something slips through and I'll tell you some customer comes up and tells me, or tells the people in the store, hey, this isn't right. And it isn't right, but somehow it got through our, our system. So a lot of our customers are very knowledgeable about what we do. The task for us is to be able to reach out to others and kind of help them make a transition. Now, I'll be honest, I don't eat organic all the time. I eat healthy, try to eat healthy foods and, and look at that, but we're not just an organic store, we are a healthy store with healthy alternatives. And we also found that a lot of our customers who were traveling <laughs> elsewhere to other stores like Whole Foods and Earth Fair were very knowledgeable about the products. And so when we came here, we knew that before we came, but I was reading, when we picked this market, there's a, there's a survey, some of you may know about these surveys, but this tells you where your business is going. And there was a great migration of grocery, pro grocery stores or grocery products and, and markets going out of town. And that told us that, you know, there's a lot of people going elsewhere to get their stuff versus staying in Hickory to get their stuff. So we looked at it as an opportunity to fill a niche and uh, really try to help the public understand better why they should be eating products that are free of a lot of ingredients that are, you know, they're probably not going to kill you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not up here fat saying everything's going to do you damage. But over a period of lifetime, some of these things do affect your body. It was interesting, uh, I was involved in a um, startup company, which failed, but it was a uh, skin moisture, organic, totally organic, and uh, very, a very good product. The owners, or the uh, present, they probably weren't the best business people, but that's beside the point. The point that was intriguing was that I learned very clearly and very quickly that so much of your stuff that you put on you from other sources of moisturizers and creams and so forth, I mean, a, a high percentage, almost 70 percent, sucks into your skin. That is one of the ways that a lot of people talk about drinking something or eating something they're going to get. You get a lot of stuff through your skin. In fact, most of the damaging stuff comes through your skin. So this, this intrigued me and I looked at our product lines and, and I'm not the product gatekeeper by any means. But you look at the product lines and you kind of look for those things. And I think that if given time, we as consumers will certainly be benefited for health reasons by focusing on what we eat. A little story about the word food matters. I mean. When I first, I didn't come up, we had my partner and I and uh, our manager down at uh, Brevard were kind of searching for names when he took over the store. And so me, I go out and start it, I come up with a bunch of names and we came up with Food Matters. It, and so I started asking the local community, they said, no, that would never work. It doesn't, I said, I kept saying, why wouldn't that work? I mean, food does matter. Service matter. I mean, it's such a great segue into other messages that you can give to your customers or to your public. Well, it, there, there was a store there called Poppies, and that, this is no disparaging remarks about Poppies, it's just that was the name of it. And I found out, which I knew coming from a small town, that people get loyal to their community. And I remember that growing up in a small town of 900 people in Wisconsin. And so when you try to take something and put it in place of something, in a smaller community, there is a real loyalty to whatever that is. And that, there's, and that actually it was kind of a bantering back and forth with our, some of our local people, but my point is we took from that that we as a market, when we go into these smaller communities, 
we need to be a local participant, not just with our product, not just with our purchasing, but with the community itself. So as we, shall I say, start our, have started our journey here in Hickory, we feel that this is a great market. We feel that there's opportunity here. We need to reach out further and kind of get with the schools, get with all kinds of uh, opportunities that exist. We are also, our, sec our third store is going to be in Morganton. So some of you may know that, some of you may not. But the same philosophy goes there, is that we feel that we're able to communicate in another small community. So in closing, uh, I don't know how much time I got, but I'll, I'm kind of short-winded. Hopefully I'll have yeah, Packers winning, so yeah, I'd come back. <laughs> um, the, uh, I hope that you all take an opportunity to take advantage of the uh, coupon that you've got and stop in and visit with us. And if you do so, please ask our customers, I mean, excuse me, ask our sales force or our people, our team members, you know, anything you want about the products. Knowledge is gold in, in many respects. And, and food does matter. It really does. And so uh, I think that people are getting more aware of that. And we feel that our message is very clear that we want to help people. We want to make money doing it, by the way. But we, uh, we do want to help people understand that there's better ways of eating. Now, that doesn't mean that we got all the answers. But I hope that you can uh, have an opportunity to visit with us and stop by. And if there's any questions after the session today, but I, I'd like to throw the store. Uh, store you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally involved in business. Uh, any questions about food matters or anything else that would be of interest that I could help you with? Would, yes? How would you compare food matters to Trader Joe's? Good question. Trader Joe's is a price driven, <coughs> they have quality food. They do things in a quality way. They, they really market. Mm -hmm. They have fewer SKUs by SKUs products in the store than we do. They're not organic. They're not all natural, but they're quality products. And they do a great job in 12,000 square feet of moving product. It's priced well, and it's their, their whole thing is price. Their whole thing is come and get it and go out the door. Uh, and they just move. Their whole philosophy is to move it. They have, what I understand, that they'll have two trucks come a day, and they just take it off the truck, put it in the back room, and stick it on the floor. That's great. I mean, we can't do that. We just don't have that much business. So their pricing is better, but they're not what we are. They, they're not a national organic <coughs> store or a health food store. In that, but they're great competition, I'll say that. A lot of people look at it. Any other questions or any comments? How many of people have, probably a dead question, I probably shouldn't ask it, but yes. Well, just uh, welcome to Hickory. Uh, really glad you're here. Hope you guys do well. It's a great concept, and uh, we're glad you're here. Well, I'm happy to be here, too, so <clears throat> I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today, and we'll be a member. We'll probably see you guys more often on a weekly basis or so. So thanks again. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, it's a statement as well. Um, I don't know if you are um, gluten intolerant or do gluten-free diet, diet, but they have tons of product there, gluten-free. You go down the aisle. My, my mom is and so I go and shop there and get stuff for her, and it's amazing, the selection. So. Yeah, and I, I want to just get, thank you for that, because I'm going to segue to something else. So those of you who are looking for, uh, what I want to say, that we call it HBC, Health and Beauty Care Products. I go back to the skin analogy. We have a, as great a selection of products that you can get anywhere in the country. I mean, Whole Foods and other ones have it. You can get a lot of stuff online, but we have not only just a product, but the ability to explain to the use of the product to our customers. So we've, we're very strong in that area. And all our, we have a great variety of local meats, too. There's, um, it's got nothing to do with the seasonality as much, but we do have some great, and we, that's the thing we pride ourselves in, local <laughs> and, and quality meats. I you know, like the idea of that you have a small store, and I'm wondering what part of your business model relates to the size of the store versus like you know, like a 3,000, 4,000 square foot 
and the profitability versus a mega store that we're used to. That, there's, that's an interesting uh, uh, question. Our model is simplicity. We look at it this way. You, you, you make money on your gross margin, you make money on your labor cost, and you make money on the, the only thing you can't really play with once you're in is the fixed cost of your rent and everything else. So in answer to your question, we picked the, the, the smaller model. I mean, earth fairs are bigger. But we've picked it for two reasons. One, obviously, the size of the community. We, if we came in here at a 25,000 square foot store and tried to do business with, with Lowe's or other companies, in our store, we'd get killed because we just couldn't match the pricing. We couldn't match the other stuff. So we shrunk it down. But that's not the real reason why they're the, the size they are. The reason that they're the size that we can put our products in Anybody can walk in that store and feel comfortable that they're going to be able to look at everything that's right there. And <clears throat> we're able to maintain a labor cost because less than normal, not, not normal, but less than what you would in a larger store. Because you can get to a customer within a minute and a half anywhere in the store. If you walk in, we can see you. If you've got a question, you all you got to take four steps and you'll run into somebody. But we don't have a fast, if you go in a, a lot, and I'll use Lowe's because it's right up the street. There's a lot of people, but our people are our people are within one, like I say, one and a half minutes at the most from you if you've got questions. And they are they can go to you or come down. So that's the intimacy part that I was talking about. So our model is simplicity, intimacy, and the ability to manage our our communications with our customers. It, it's all about that, and and we can. We could be more helpful because we're closer. That that's the model. Any other questions? Well, thank you again for letting me be part of your lunchtime, and hope to see you folks in and make use of the coupon. And if you're in the store, just ask for Al if I'm here. I we're kind of on our, working our way in Morganton right now, trying to get open in January, so I'm kind of running around a lot. And then I got to. My wife at home manages my life, so I got to go back there and check in her so often. So, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Book on a quotes about being thankful. Oh, okay. Thank you. As a way of saying thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, visiting Rotarians, for joining us, as well as guests of Rotarians. Just want to remind you to sign up for Transportation Insight next Tuesday, as well as Salvation Army bell ringing the Leadership Institute on the 14th, and the movie on the 16th. Um, and we'll start off sign-ups next week for the social on December 3rd. Tony, what we got? We took in, uh, we have 41 cards. We took in $61 today. I don't know if you want to win the pot today. It's $666. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> the last three. And it's a dark blue ticket. I think we had two different colors today. Dark blue ticket, nine, seven, eight. While everybody's checking there, Jerry, all right. Also, please see me afterwards if you're interested in being the field day coordinator or the interact chair. All right, we've got one. Ace of Hearts. Ace of Hearts. Free lunch. Free lunch. Let's close with the four-way test. Of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth?